Hello, everybody, it's Balkanook, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use World Edit in Minecraft 1.20. Now, I've made a lot of videos in the past about how to use World Edit in different Minecraft versions, and they've all done pretty well, so I figured that with the new update and World Edit both released, it's about time to make an updated tutorial on how to use World Edit. So, the first command that you want to use is the wand command. Um, now, before we do that, though, if you want to learn how to download and install World Edit, you can watch my video from yesterday. It's going to show you exactly exactly how to do that in under five minutes so be sure to check that video out put a link to it in the description if you need any help getting it installed but anyways once you have it installed you want to do slash slash and then type in the word wand and that's going to give you a world edit wand and the world edit wand is your basic um tool that you can use to create any world edit commands As you can see i already have another one in my inventory so we'll just go ahead and remove that but um basically the wooden axe turns into a wand um, with World Edit, and you can actually play it in game. There is one quick thing that I forgot to mention, um, and that is you need to have cheats enabled in your world in order for World Edit to work. But, anyways, the next command that we're going to learn how to use is the position command. So, um, basically, with the position command, you can fly anywhere in the world and you can just select a position by typing pose, and then you can do one or two. So, for this one, we'll do number one, and then we'll fly somewhere else and set a different position. And like right here, we'll just do position number two. And now we have our second position set. Um, this is a good alternative to using the wand. Essentially, the wand will do the exact same thing. So like if we go in the ground here and click, then um, it'll say first position right here. And then it'll say second position right there. But um, if you want to set a position in the air or something like that where you can't just tap with a wand, then you can use the pose command. But um, without further ado, let's go ahead and... Learn the set command. So to do the set command, that's the first major command. You just want to select your positions first. So we'll go ahead and do that. And um, now that we have our position selected, we're going to type out slash slash set. And then you want to hit the space button. And from here, you can pick any Minecraft block. So we'll just go ahead and choose cobblestone. And then we'll click enter. And as you can see, the area that we selected will now turn into cobblestone and that is a pretty cool um pretty cool build right there so now that we have this area set it's actually time to begin um creating some walls and that's gonna be the next command that we're gonna learn how to do so to make walls all you have to do is just select an area which we can do that um just by creating a rectangle or a square or whatever we'll just choose two different sections and we'll just type out the command walls. And we'll make the walls oak planks. And hit enter and boom. As you can see, we now have an area completely filled in with oak planks for the walls. And that's pretty much all you have to do for the walls command. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the stack command. Alright, so um, to use the stack command, it's actually a very simple, very easy to use command. Um, what we're going to essentially do here is create a little bit like a roof design and then we'll actually stack it because in case you haven't noticed, I am building a house in Minecraft. Or at least I'm going to build as much of a house as is suitable for the tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and place the roof and I am going to keep it relatively simple because I don't want to take too much time out of the tutorial. But we'll just go ahead and um, just do something like that. And to use the stack command, you just want to select your first area right here. And for the second position, we'll practice using the pose. Because we'll, we'll fly up here and we'll just do pose 2. And that's going to select this entire region as our position. And we're just going to stack it forward. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 blocks forward. And we'll just type in slash slash stack. And then we'll type out 13, because we want to stack it 13 blocks forward. And we'll hit space again. And we'll type the letter F, because F stands for forward. And we'll click enter. And boom, as you can see, we now have a lovely Minecraft roof that is stacked forward for us. Um, the stack command is also very useful if you want to stack something in a cardinal direction. So, for example, we have a cobblestone wall right here. I want to stack this um, southeast. So to do that, I'm going to hit my wand. I'm just going to set the position. I'm going to stack it 25 southeast. And southeast, it's going to just be short as SE. 
You're going to hit enter, and boom, it's going to stack the wall 25 blocks southeast. And you can do this with any cardinal direction. Uh, so north, northeast, uh, east, you know, southeast, south, southwest, west, and uh, northwest. So all, any of those different cardinal directions, you can stack it forward. And you can also do multiple blocks at the same time. So like we can do three different blocks, all right? And like we'll stack this one 10 southeast and boom as you can see it would stack it just like that so this is very useful for creating diagonal roads uh, if you're ever building a micro city but anyways that's pretty much all you have to do to get the stack command so for the copy command um that's the next one we're going to learn here so we have this lovely well, wooden house or at least a start of a wooden house so we're just going to select it and we're going to copy and paste it so we're going to select our first position here on the ground all right and we are going to select our second position up here in the air. So we'll just go up in the air here and select it as position number two. There we go. Now, when you're copying something, it's very important where you start to actually copy it because um, I will show you in a minute. So what you, I always like to do is I like to press F3 so that way I can see my navigation. And I always like to face the same direction, which I always like to face north. So we're going to face north, and we're going to stand on the bottom left corner of the build. And we're going to type in the command copy, which is just slash, slash, copy. Hit enter. All right. And that's actually all you have to do to copy. Uh, next thing we're going to learn how to do is paste. So pasting it's extremely simple. You're just going to go over to wherever you want to paste it. Uh, we'll just pick right here, and we'll do slash, slash, paste. And we will hit enter, and boom. As you can see, the house is now pasted. So if you want to rotate this building, um, we can do that as well. Um, we're going to rotate it. Now, there's four cardinal directions you can rotate something. There's, um, uh, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. It's actually only three. Um, you can also do a full 360, but it's going to make it look exactly like it did originally. So, to rotate it, all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, um, we're going to type slash slash rotate. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So, we're going to make the house face in this direction. We're going to pick a spot, and we're going to paste it. Boom. There we go. So now we have our house pasted. As you can see, these houses are facing that way. This house is turned 90 degrees, and it's now facing that way. And if you need help remembering what the 90, 180, and 270 degrees uh, stand for, you can just look at, like, a clock or something like that, and that will tell you, just give you that fresh reminder as far as where all of your angles are at. So with Rotate Complete, um, there is another thing that I'm going to show you how to do, and this is especially important um, with trees. So, let's say that um, we wanted to paste the house without ruining the cobblestone wall. So, right here, we're going to paste the house, and we're going to paste it so that it doesn't ruin the wall. So, to do that, we're just going to do slash slash paste, alright, and then we're going to do negative A. Alright, and this is going to be a little bit strange. I just actually recently learned this one. But all you do is slash, slash, paste, a space, and then negative A, and you hit enter. And as you can see, your house is now pasted. And while it looks like it's going to cover up these walls, so you're just taking them over, if you fly inside the house, you can actually see that our walls are still here. Now, you may be wondering, why in the world would I do this? Well, if you actually, um, if you actually are building trees... This is extremely useful because that way the trees won't obstruct any buildings or anything else. But you can still fill in the surrounding landscape with the trees. So that was a huge groundbreaking discovery for me when I first found that one out. Um, anyways, next we are going to learn how to replace something. So we have our lovely cobblestone walls right here. But I don't really want them to be walls. I want to replace them. So I'm going to set my position again right here. And hopefully by this part of the tutorial you kind of know how to um you know like replace or set your positions um so we have our position set here we're going to replace these cobblestone walls with brick walls so we're just going to do replace um which is slash slash and then replace you can also just do slash slash rep and hit space it's going to also work and we're going to replace our cobblestone walls which if we start to type that out you can see we can select it with a brick wall so we're just going to type out brick wall now you want to leave one space in between cobblestone wall and brick wall and then you just want to hit enter, and boom, as you can see, our brick, our cobblestone walls are now brick walls, which is absolutely incredible. And to make this even more advanced, 
or it also gives you the ability to set percentages. So like we can do brick walls, all right? And we can do re replacing all the brick walls with 50% andesite walls and comma. And you always want to do a comma if you're doing percentages. 50% granite. Well, and I cannot type granite walls. There we go. Now, an important thing is when you're doing your percentages, you always want to make sure that they add up to 100. All right. If they don't add up to 100, then it's not going to work. So you have 50 and 50 right here. You can do as many things as you want. Um, you can replace these brick walls with 100 different blocks and just do 1% of each block. But it has to add up to 100. And once you're done typing that all out, you can hit enter. And then, as you can see, some of our walls will be replaced. So, like, we have uh, this one, 50% granite, 50% andesite, for all of these different walls that we have right here. And that's pretty much all you have to do in order to actually replace something. So, the um, next command we're going to do is the schematic command. Now, we were talking about the trees earlier and how you can, um, you can actually, like, go in and... Uh, place the trees and this is extremely useful because what we're going to do is we're going to actually um copy and paste something in a different world so we have this planter right here this is planter number six in the random world this is a building template that i have so what we're going to do is we're going to select our positions um uh, with the wand and we're going to copy this and we're going to transport this building to a different world so all we're going to do is we're going to do slash slash copy all right and then we are going to do slash slash scheme all right, and then you can hit space, or you can just click uh, where it says schematic. Either one will work, and we're going to do save. So right here, it's automatically going to pop up all these different ones. You can do delete, formats, list, load, save. Um, so we're going to click save for this one. And now, we get to give our schematic a name. So we are just going to name it, um, we're just going to name it plant. And it's going to say plant save. All right? Now... Um, quick thing, you do have to make sure that you copy it before you save it as a schematic. Other than that, there's really no other tips. Uh, but you do, just like when you're copying something, you want to stand in the exact spot. So, like, right now, I'm facing west. So, when I go into my other microphone, I want to make sure I'm facing west when I place it. That way, I know exactly where it's going to go. So, we're going to go ahead and save and quit from this microphone right here. This is just a template world. We're going to actually go into our medieval village that you can see right here. And, um... After you've learned all of these cool word edit commands, while well, this word is getting loaded up, now would be a great time to subscribe. Uh, if you're not watching it on the full screen mode, it's going to be right below where the uh, where the video is playing. So just an, just an FYI there. But here we are in our medieval village. And as you can see, it's spawning right before our eyes. It's a little bit better than my other world. But what we're going to do is we're going to click F3 so we know where west is, and this direction apparently is west. And we're just going to put our planter on the ground somewhere. So we're going to fly to the ground, and we can close out of this for now so you can see the actual screen. But all we're going to do is we're going to do slash slash scheme load. This time we're going to load it. We don't want to save it this time. We're going to load it, and we're going to load the plant. Now, you have to type it out exactly the way that you, um, that you saved it as. You have to spell it the same way. All the spaces have to be the same way. If you don't do it, it's not going to work. Um, so you have to type it out exactly how you saved it. So you can click enter, and it's going to say that the plant is now loaded, and we can paste it. So all we're going to do is we're going to pick a spot, which we already did, and we're going to just paste it. And boom, as you can see, our planter is now in the ground in the middle of this medieval village. Now, there are two more commands to learn, and they kind of coincide with each other. They are the undo command, and it's the redo command. So... Let's say we didn't like this planter here, you know, because, like, let's let's look around, honestly. I mean, does this thing really look that great here? I mean, I really don't think it does, so I'm going to remove it. So, I can just do slash slash undo, and that's all I have to do. You can just click enter, and the planter will magically disappear right before your eyes. Isn't that amazing? If you ever make a mistake with word edit, and trust me, there will be times when you make quite massive mistakes with word edit. All you have to do is just undo it. And um, so, like, you can even do multiple times. Like, if we paste this tree in multiple different spots, all right? If we paste a tree in multiple different spots in all these different areas here, like, we can 
we can paste on, I don't know where to place it. I'm spending too much time figuring out where to place it. There we go. So like, we have three different trees here. We can do undo two or three. We do undo three and it's gonna undo all three of those actions right there. So if you make multiple mistakes in a row, that doesn't matter either. Uh, you can also just manually go in and undo it one at a time, but that number also works pretty cool. Um, the only bad thing about it is if you save and quit your world, then you're not going to be able to undo something. So, like, if I save and quit and then log back in, that planter is staying there. There's, I have no choice but to physically remove it by hand if I want to get rid of it after I save my world. Um, so the final command is the redo command. That's pretty simple. I'll show you what it does here in a second. It's just going to redo all of the available edits. So, like, we have our trees here. We can redo it one more time. And then, boom, all of the trees are there. And we can even undo three. I don't know why it wasn't working there. Oh, we have to space. Undo three. And we can even redo three at the same time also. And all three of those planters will magically pop up there. Um, but that's pretty much all you have to do. I don't want to keep those planters there, so I'm going to actually undo them. But, um... That's the beginner's guide to War Edit. I may do a tutorial for more advanced things because I didn't cover everything in this video. War Edit's a huge mod, and there's other things like how to use brushes and you know how to calculate stuff, how to create cylinders and and things like that that are uh, quite advanced. And I could probably spend an entire hour making a tutorial on this if I really wanted to, but um, I might save that for another time. If this video gets a lot of uh, support. I would definitely consider doing a more advanced version for those of you who already know all this stuff that I just went over. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you like my village too, by the way. It's almost done, and I'm going to do a video on that soon. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video, and have a great day. As a quick reminder, also, uh, if you need to download War Edit, click check the description. That's where you're going to find my uh, video on how to download it for 1.20.1. That'll work for all versions of Minecraft 1.20. So uh, definitely check that out. But anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.